Hello, it's uh, Dmitry from Circle, and in this video we will discuss uh, the question of neural network compression. With time, neural networks uh, become more and more powerful. For example, things like high-quality machine translation were nearly impossible 10 years ago, and here we are harnessing this incredible thing in our pockets. However, nothing in this world is free, and with power comes size. Amount of parameters in neural networks is increasing nearly exponentially. VGG16, a convolutional neural network that was introduced in 2014, had 138 million parameters. In comparison, GPT-3, one of the latest networks for natural language processing, was introduced by OpenAI and in 2020, and it has 175 billion parameters. As a result, training and using those models uh, becomes prohibitively expensive. In some cases, uh, the training uh, procedure can burn through lengths of thousands of US dollars just for electricity bill alone. Unfortunately, at the moment, this is a necessary evil if we want uh, to push the model performance further. However, it does not mean uh, that we can increase the speed of inference. And this is where compression mechanics uh, come in. In order to produce a response from the neural network, hardware has to do multiple operations of matrices and tensors. Consequently, the smaller the network, the smaller the amount of operations needed and the faster is the inference. This becomes uh, increasingly relevant in low-power hardware, like smartphones. Don't get me wrong, uh, they are incredibly powerful nowadays, but they are nowhere as powerful as a personal computer or server. Besides, mobile phones have harsher space restrictions, so large models might take too much of it. Even though deep learning might seem like a fresh uh, field, machine learning. Research in it started quite a while ago, mostly theoretical though, due to the computational power limitations of the time. So researchers have uh, found lots of ways to compress the network. Some of them uh, keep the original structure and only modify the weights, and some of them modify the structure via removing uh, some of the layers entirely. For example, entire filters in convolutional neural networks. Today we will briefly discuss those popular methods. We will start with the technique called weight sharing. This is the simplest method of uh, neural network compression. It relies on the idea that we can reuse some weights for different neurons. Weird example, we can consider a convolutional layer as a fully connected one uh, with an extreme case of weight sharing, where most weights are hard-coded to be zero and the others are grouped in a specific order into small amount of parameters equal to the amount of parameters in a filter. It is worth noting that this method requires proper implementation, because otherwise it won't bring any improvements. The structure of the network does not change and weight matrices are not sparse. One could ask, how do we decide which weights we should share and which ones we should not? This is a difficult question that doesn't have an universal answer. Even if you have already decided on the architecture, you have to guess the way to share and you most likely be wrong. Neural networks weights are not interpretable after all. As a way to overcome this problem, soft weight uh, sharing was introduced. This method uh, assumes that weights follow the distribution code Gaussian mixture. Roughly speaking, uh, we randomly choose one of the normal distributions and uh, sample for it. After that, we try to find the most uh, suitable weights and parameters for the mixture. Suitability is measured in two ways. The training metric and negative uh, logarithm of the probability of those weights. The lower, the better. However, this method does not really learn which weights should be shared because it forces the weights in buckets that we decide before training, even though uh, the process can modify those baskets freely. 
there are methods that try to actually learn which ways should be shared, but they are quite mathematically intensive, so we won't discuss them here. Other ways of weight sharing include parameter hashing, when we group weights in multiple buckets uh, using uh, hash functions, recursive layer reusing, when we feed the output of the layer as its input. Nowadays, this method is still used, for example, in 2019, used share attention was uh, used in paper by Excel uh, to compress the transformer networks with reasonable success. Next, we will talk about network pruning. This method is arguably the most common when it comes to compressing pre-trained networks. This idea behind is somewhat similar to human behavior. We usually forget things that are irrelevant or unimportant. Network uh, pruning does the same. It removes weights that don't contribute any meaningful impact to the response. It is worth noting that uh, pruning is not a random procedure. Experiments show that removing random weights hurts uh, the performance uh, quite significantly and can extend the retraining time. It is worth noting that this method can be useful for dealing with overfitting during training. There are four main uh, pruning methods. The easiest one is called magnitude sample pruning. This method uh, generally implies that we introduce a threshold for the weights that must not be exceeded. It can work on different ways. For example, you can remove weights uh, that deviate from the average. Or you can consider gradient values in backpropagation and remove weights that correspond to the gradients whose norm is smaller than a specified threshold. Or you can remove a specified uh, percentage of weights ordered by some metric. The next uh, thing we can do is we can use regularization. This method is used during training or fine-tuning and it means the following. We add a so-called regularization term to the loss and use the resulting sum as a metric uh, to backpropagate from. Generally, this is used for enforcing the model to learn from a network uh, without large weights. We are adding penalties for that, but it can also be used uh, for pruning small weights. Thirdly, we can use loss uh, as a sensitivity indicator. How will this metric change if we remove a weight? If the change is small enough, then we can freely remove it. In this case, small enough uh, can be interpreted the same way as in magnitude-based pruning. Finally, there are uh, search-based approaches. They generally seek to learn or adapt a set of weights to links or paths with uh, the neural network and keep those uh, which are salient for the task. It is worth noting that these methods generally do not rely on gradient descent as a part of the pruning criteria and uh, quite a lot of them use reinforcement learning as a base. Pruning methods can also be divided in two groups. Uh, the unstructured ones, uh, which preserve the structure of the network and replaces irrelevant weights in matrices with uh, zeros making them sparse. The second one is structured pruning. It can remove nodes and modify the network, but the result will be a dense network. There is a trade-off between them. Unstructured pruning is more flexible, uh, but structure allows for faster inference due to extreme organization of matrix multiplication in GPUs and TPUs. Unfortunately, in order to fully utilize the benefits of unstructured pruning, uh, one needs to use multiplication of uh, sparse matrices, which is not as efficient. Earlier we said that pruning is generally used uh, for pre-trained networks. However, it can also be used in quite a specific way, pruning before training. In 2018, Frankie and uh, Carbon suggested a so-called uh, lottery ticket hypothesis. Uh, for every network, we can find a sparse subnetwork that will provide the same accuracy when trained from scratch with the same initialized weights. In this case, pruning is used uh, as a sort of architecture search method, 
We train networks, we prune them using magnitude-based approach, for example, order them by quality, uh, mix the best ones and uh, repeat this process until we get the desired results. The third option that we have in neural network compression is called matrix and tensor decomposition. This method relies on replacing a tensor as a product of two smaller tensors. This significantly reduces the memory requirements. For example, if you had MXN matrix and we decompose that into MXR and uh, RXN matrix, reducing the size, memory complexity uh, changes from uh, mn to r multiplied by m plus n, which can be quite significant if, if um, the term r is small enough. Of course, this decomposition won't be perfect, so we need to find matrices that will minimize the error. Luckily, if we deal uh, with uh, matrices, this is quite a standard task from linear algebra. So there are multiple ways to deal with it. The most popular way is called singular value de decomposition or SVD. We decompose the matrix uh, in the product of three matrices, where the first and the third one are orthogonal and the middle one is diagonal. When it comes to the tensors, the situation becomes significantly more difficult. But there are some methods like uh, tensor tray. They are extremely mathematically heavy, so we won't go into details in this video. The final option that we have is uh, called knowledge distillation. In this method, we train a small network, uh, which is sometimes called student network, that tries to recreate results from a bigger one, which is called teacher network. The general approach is as follows. First, we use the teacher network to process some data to get the outputs. After that, we train a new model that tries to minimize some sort of uh, metric between uh, its outputs and the outputs of the teacher model. There are multiple choices of metrics, for example, distance, divergence, or entropy. It is worth noting that uh, the teacher network does not need to be a singular model. It can be an ensemble of models, in which case uh, the ensemble output is used as a value to predict. Even though this method is mathematically proven to work, it has a problem. If the gap of dimensionality between the student and the teacher is too large, the distillation might prove to be too difficult. It has a workload uh, in introducing the teacher assistant network, a network that uh, is larger than the student network, but still smaller than the teacher network. In this case, we need to do double distillation from teacher to assistant and from assistant to teacher. Another thing about this method uh, is that can, it can work without any data. This is quite helpful in cases when the data is classified due to privacy issues. In this case, we can use teacher model as a sort of a generator. We try to synthesize the data that is close to the distribution of the training and get the corresponding outputs. This method is quite tricky to use. Nowadays, this method uh, is becoming increasingly popular in natural language processing, specifically for uh, distillizing uh, bird-like networks. The final method that I uh, want to talk about in this video is uh, called quantization. This is the least uh, theoretical method of all, but it uh, gets the job done. The idea is quite simple. Generally, computers use 32-bit or 64 for bit arithmetic for calculations. However, neural networks are not sensitive enough to significantly change the behavior simply because of change of weight that is smaller than 10 uh, to the power of minus six. As a result, engineers suggested a using lower precision flow to point values as weights. This allows to increase the uh, training and inference speed quite significantly. There are several ways to do this. The most popular method is mixed precision training, in which 16-bit computations are used wherever possible. This approach uh, with modern uh, hardware that has specific instructions for effective uh, lower precision computation allows to get the quality that is similar to the standard training uh, with spending less time. Speed up varies from 60% on TPUs to up to several times on uh, standard consumer GPUs. 
It is worth noting that there are more extreme quantization methods. It is not limited to 16-bit. Some papers suggest going as low as 1-bit, so they come with a drawback of significantly reduced accuracy. To sum up uh, the points that we talked about today, I want to stress uh, some points that we discussed. First of all, there are multiple ways to compress the network. We can use uh, a variety of methods to do this, depending on what, what we need. A quick and dirty solution is uh, quantization, but uh, the drawback is that it uh, reduces the overall accuracy. Premium proper ones are distillation, pruning and weight sharing, but they are quite complicated in nature. Unusual and esoteric is tens of decomposition, but it needs for mass uh, to be done. These solutions are relevant uh, even in case of large companies, because uh, every, 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 everyone wants to save some money and uh, time. The bigger the network is, the more important network compression is for you. If you understand uh, these methods, uh, you will save a lot of time and money. Uh, so uh, I think it is great for everyone. So that is all that I wanted to discuss for now. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more lectures on machine learning, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon.